What's up, YouTubers? Welcome back to the channel. Hope everyone's doing well out there. Today's video is all about this major scale pattern of three and how we can implement that into the music of The Grateful Dead. So let's go. Also, if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button. Cool. So like today's video title mentions, today we're checking out this major scale pattern of three and how we can implement this technique when soloing over the music of the Grateful Dead. Now, if you frequent the channel often, pattern of four is something we talk about a lot and kind of a key component in the Garcia arsenal. So for example, if we're in the key of A, a ascending pattern of four would look something like this. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Right, and now descending. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And that's a very common phrase you'd hear Garcia do, for example, over songs like Scarlet Fire, Althea, Sugary, and even Mexicali Blues. Now, what separates that pattern of four from today's pattern of three is instead of climbing up three notes from the root, then three notes from the second degree, one, two, three, right? One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. We'll be looking at it as a pattern of three, but with two notes, if that makes sense. Something like this. And if we go to the second octave, right? Pretty cool, hey? Let's zoom in more on the fretboard and we can really dive into what's really happening. So being in the key of A major, right? Our notes are A, B, C sharp, D, E, F sharp, G sharp, A. And if we do the second octave. Right. This is stuff we should all know by now. <laughs> this pattern of three is pretty simple in the way, all diatonic notes, in that we're starting from the root, going down a half step to the major seven, that G sharp, going back to the root. You would then do second degree, first degree, second degree, right? And so on and so forth. Third degree, second degree, third degree, Four, three, four, five, four, five, six, five, six, major seven, six, major seven, root, and then it repeats. that we can call like our home base. If we go now to a second position, right, let's say pinky starting um, fifth fret of low E string, it would look something like this. Right? 
pretty cool. Right? It's nothing really breathtaking, but when, as we'll see later, when you implement this idea in a solo, it gives it just that extra bit of movement, which is really cool. So now if we go to, let's say, our C shape, A major, it would look something like this. So those are some ways you can do it two octave, right? Which is already in itself perfect. If we want to expand and have full control of the same pattern, but across the fingerboard, now we introduce this three octave major scale, right? So check this out. It could start, let's say, from fifth fret of low E. Right? Pretty cool, hey? So we started fifth fret of the low E string, climbed our way up one octave to 12th fret of the A string, climbed our way up one more octave to 14 of G, that A, and then one more octave to 17th fret of high E string. Right? One more time. Take it out. Send a major scale. Pretty cool, hey? So now if we check it out in the context of a Grateful Dead song, because this is all great to know, but if we can't apply it, then it's not really useful. So let's say we're doing like a Bertha, right? And we're just about to jump into the solo section. A pattern like this, diatonic to the key that we're in, is a great way to start it. So check it out. If we're doing... Right. You saw there are two different uses. One as a pickup to that C chord, where at which point we can have fun in G. From G, again, we can do that same pattern. 
Something like that. Let me do it again with the right notes. <laughs> And then we spell a C major triad. Back to G. Right? So one more time. Pretty cool, right? And again, we're playing the diatonic notes in the context of Bertha, which would be G mixolydian. And then we can do. So two very similar phrases, just different parts of the fingerboard. So that's one way we can use that in context of Bertha. If we want to introduce it in a more complex progression, we can check out Jack Straw. Let's remember that Jack Straw chord progression is D, B minor, A, E, right? So there, I'm approaching it from this D chord. And then finishing off by spelling that E triad. Doing some more soloing. Right? So I'm using it, like you saw, getting from first chord D to last chord E. And it's a great way, again, just to add a bit of different, how do you say it, like a bit of more momentum in your solo, right? And it's such a great tool. And when we look at it, it's just major scale. The importance of the major scale is crucial for everything. So again, major scale, but with groupings of three.
Well, all right, guys, that is today's video focusing on this pattern of three from the major scale. And like mentioned before, Garcia loved the pattern of four. But this pattern of three is a great way and an effective tool to use in your solo techniques to get you from point A to point B. Again, it's not a breathtaking scale. It's the most simple scale in the world, and that is the major scale. So with all that being said, if you enjoyed today's video, please press like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one.